we're finally at the point where we have enough building blocks and enough foundational knowledge of the components of the immune system. Now to put it all together and talk about what happens or how the immune system works. And we're gonna do that by looking at how it becomes stimulated to begin with. We're gonna flip now and we're going to focus on cell mediated side of the immune system. And so we're looking at T cells and we're gonna be focusing on T cells in this chapter. Um, the other arm humoral we'll look at in the next chapter with B cells. But uh, this chapter is all about T cell mediated immunity, both CD4 and CD8. Uh, we're gonna divide this up into, let's get my, there we go. We're gonna divide this up into um, two big lectures. The first lecture is going to be all about activation. It's gonna be a big one. There's gonna be a lot of information in it because it's going to consider what happens when those naive T cells that were developed um, and tested for through development um, first encounter their specific antigen and the signals that they get that tell uh, them to proliferate, to differentiate, and to go on to become effector T cells. That will be the first big, and so it's a big doozy of a lecture. Then the second part, we're going to look at the effector functions of these T cells. So we'll we'll take a look at CD4 positive T cells and the different subtypes, major subtypes, what their functions are, what cytokines they release, uh, and what their role is in the immune system. And then we'll also look at CD8 positive T cells, but the only effector T cell, the really the only effector cell that is a, a CD8 positive T cell is going to be your cytotoxic lymphocyte. So that one's a little less involved, but this is how we'll break it down. Um, but we need to go back to a long time ago, way back. This is going to go to the history books here. And we're going to look at the last slide of chapter three. And if you don't remember what the last slide of chapter three is, I have it in this, this book here. And this is where we left off with the innate immune system. And we, we looked at how the innate immune system functions. And we looked at uh, what happens when two things can happen. One, the, um, the number of um, dendritic cells were was small enough that the innate immune system was able to keep it under control and, and fight the infection. And then there, there was no movement into the adaptive system. The other scenario was that the innate immune system was overwhelmed by the number of dendritic cells. And so when the innate immune system is unable to terminate that infection, then the adaptive immune response is going to be initiated. And so if an infecting pathogen successfully can outrun the innate immune system, then and only then is when the adaptive immune system gets called up. All of the T cells and B cells finally get to play and contribute into protecting the individual. So this is really um, gonna be the bulk of, we're gonna move into uh, these two sections, but um, it's, it's a lot. So just hang on, buckle up, and um, we should have a pretty good time going through this together.